All right, let's do a quick review about yesterday. Um, if you want to, you can take out your rational function stuff that we worked on yesterday. That spreadsheet. And uh, I just want to ask some questions. Huey, what do you remember about yesterday? Yeah, polynomial divided by polynomial, we call those things rational functions. You know what else? Okay, so points of discontinuity, we call them PODs, they could either be a, a whole or a vertical asymptote. And, and Mary, what causes a point of discontinuity? Yes. When the denominator is equal to zero, that means divide by zero, which means bad. That's bad. Don't do that. Yeah. Alexandra, what else? Yeah, that's another word for for uh, whole and vertical asymptote. Um, what, why are they called removable and essential? So if it can cancel, then it's removable, right? That makes sense. And if, it's, if you're unable to cancel it, uh, then it's essential. It just has to be there. Cool. Uh, Asia, anything else you remember about yesterday? No, um, what the horizontal Yeah, horizontal asymptotes. How did we find those? Oh, well, we had three different, we got two Mm-hmm. The top is greater than the bottom. And what do you mean by greater? You know what? Let me, let me grab somebody else so we can get around the room. Daphne, uh, what does she mean by the top is greater than the bottom? What does that mean? How do you know if the top is greater? Is it comparing the degree? Yes, we look at the degree. So a higher degree polynomial is going to grow faster. right? A cubic function is going to go a lot faster than, say, a linear. So yeah, we looked at the degrees. We compared them. We said if the top uh, had a higher degree than the bottom, then Selena, what happened? If the top is growing faster than the bottom? Then Right, because it's just growing, it's going off to infinity. That makes sense. Uh, Mauricio, how about if the bottom is greater than the top? The bottom is growing faster than the top. Say what? There's no horizontal asymptote? Mm, I don't know if that's true. Think about it, if the bottom is growing faster than the top, then you're gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna get a fraction with a huge denominator. The denominator's gonna get larger, uh, faster than the top is. And so, yeah, well, you're gonna have a, a fraction like one over a million. That's basically zero, right? So yeah, it's gonna approach zero. Um, and so the horizontal asymptote is the thing that the function is gonna approach zero. The function never actually equals zero. Right, but we're approaching zero. And that's what we're going to get into today. The, the basis of, of calculus is looking at things that we approach um, on an infinitesimal scale. We get really, really, really close to something and never actually get to it. There was this cat, uh, uh, this old uh, Greek dude. I think his name was Democritus. I think he was the dude who said, uh, if I'm walking towards a wall, I can walk like halfway to the wall. Now I can walk halfway again. Now I can walk halfway again. And I can keep walking halfway closer to the wall. Infinitely, I can always go halfway further. And then halfway further and halfway further. And I can do that forever. So he was like, you could never actually reach the wall. <laughs> Which is silly, because like, did it. <laughs> but just thinking about that mentally, like mathematically, that was, he was, you know, thousands of years ago, was, was thinking about this, um, approaching something asymptotically, right? He was having that mathematical thought. We, we didn't call it that at the time, you know, we, ancient Greeks. Uh, Helene, what else about yesterday? Um, the, some rational functions can have slant asymptotes. Yeah, slant asymptotes, right? Those verticals and horizontals, those are pretty straightforward, but a slant asymptote, 
Do you remember uh, how we found those? Uh, dividing the uh, numerator by the denominator and seeing what the left over. Yeah. So that if we had something like an x to the 4, blah, 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 and then x to the 2, blah, or let's say we had um, x cubed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if we divide this, this is going to go into that um, some factor of x, you know, I, I don't know, some x something, um, plus a remainder. If we divide this out of this, we're going to end up with... Um, you take an x cubed out of an x to the fourth, we're going to end up with an x something over this x cubed. I'm being so vague in general right now, but can, can you, are you following along my, my, my reasoning here? Yeah. We're dividing an x cubed out of an x to the fourth, and so we're going to get a linear, it, it went into it this many times, with a remainder, and this remainder, as x goes to infinity, we're going to have a, a, a huge denominator this whole thing is going to go to zero. And we're going to have a, a leftover linear thing. That's going to be our slant asymptote. Kind of groovy stuff. Okay. Uh, was there anything else, Andrew? About uh, graphing graph all, all these functions? Yeah. They're crazy functions, too. And um, again, the reason I chose to do rational functions is, is it, it forces you to try to visualize this and look at the equation and say, uh, I, I know we're going to have a... a there's a vertical asymptote here. I know there's a vertical here. There's going to be a hole um, somewhere, you know, at x equals 3, but I don't know where in that function. And, and we have a horizontal asymptote. And I know I, have a, um, I know I have a 0 located here and here. And you have to just start. It, it forces you to visualize it, right? Um, and, and you have to say, well, how, how can I make this happen within these Right, because we don't want to cross these asymptotes, and they say, well, maybe it's something like this. You know, uh, uh, graph it, and you're like, oh, and there's a hole. Right, so, and, and then you graph it on your calculator, and maybe you were totally wrong. You're like, I <laughs> um, And that's okay, because these functions are, are, are crazy. Uh, and there's just weird stuff happens, and it's, it's hard to picture these, because pretty much a quadratic function, you know it's going to be some kind of, you know, it might be wider or, you know, you know what it's going to look like. But these ones are, are off the wall. They're, they're loose cannons. And so it, you have to think about it. You have to, to say, I wonder what happens if we plug in large values of x. Or what happens when we plug in negative values of x. You kind of have to wrestle with them. I left a sheet of paper on your desk. What do you suppose that might be for? Or a gum. <laughs> no silly goose, we're going to take a quiz. So uh, write your name on the top of that. It's going to be just a one question. I'm going to hand you one rational function and see what you can do with it. Uh, so um, yeah, write your name on top of the paper. Um, and we'll have this function here. X squared plus plus 5, and you're going to do the same deal. I want to know uh, PODs, if there's any, vertical asymptote listed, if there's a hole, the domain, the zeros, if there are any, uh, then what do we do? The degree, compare the degrees, tell me about the lead coefficients, then let me know if there's a horizontal asymptote. So do these things for that function. And actually, here's what we'll do is I'll give you guys a minute to, to factor this. And then um, if anyone doesn't have it factored after a minute, I'm going to ask you to just like put minus one point and then I'll give you the factored form. Because if, if you don't have it factored, then everything, the rest of your quiz is going to be wrong. Right. So I'll give you a minute or so to see if you can factor that thing. Our uh, points of discontinuity will be what? Anybody? Negative one and negative one. Yeah, here and here. So PODs, x equals negative one and negative five. Um, 
in a perfect world, they will have written x equals those things. But if they just wrote negative 1 and negative 5, we'll let them live. But um, yeah, negative 1 and negative 5. Uh, we're going to do um, each one of these things. We'll, we'll do one point each. So if they, if they forgot negative signs, you can give them half credit. You know, put like minus half a point. Or if they got one of them and they didn't, didn't get the other one, you can put minus half a point. Is that cool? Half credit? All right. Uh, are any of these a vertical asymptote? Negative five. X equals negative five. That's a vertical asymptote. Um, if they don't have that, it's minus one point. If they, you know, forgot the negative side, you give them half credit. Whole. X equals negative one. Again, you use a good judgment on credit. Uh, the domain is going to be everything except negative 1 and negative 5. We good? And then the zeros, huh, what are the zeros going to be? X equals 1. Um, Let's see, because one of these things cancels. So one is for sure a zero. Um, did anyone put a one or negative one? Yeah, th so this is tricky. Um, when it cancels, it's a whole, so it's technically not a zero. Um, how many people did that? Let me see hand. A couple of people did that. I'm, I'm on the fence about whether or not we should do uh, uh, let that slide or we should do partial credit. What do you guys think? Don't, uh, don't let it slide. Nah. Partial credit. Partial. Partial. How, many, how many people uh, partial credit? How many people think partial credit for that? Cool. Partial. Cool. Okay. So um, if you have just x equals one, then that's correct. But if you have one and negative one, give them uh, yeah. half a point or minus half a point. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Okay, uh, the degrees of these things. Two over two. Two over two. Um, hopefully, did, did anyone simplify that and put one? Yeah? yeah? Hmm? I did both. You did both? Okay. But if they have this on their paper, we'll, we'll, give, them, we'll give them credit. <laughs> yeah. That's on their paper. Okay, uh, lead coefficient, uh, what are the lead coefficients? Five, Five and one? Yeah. Cool. And then uh, they have equal degrees, so therefore the, the horizontal asymptote will be at five. five. Yeah, at five. Y equals five. Um, if they put y, uh, five over one, you know, I'm not mad at them. <laughs> That's okay. That's no, that's cute is what it is. Um, but yeah, y equals five. And again, like, if they just wrote five, uh, we'll, we'll, let them, we'll, let them, we'll let them take that one. But it, it really should be y equals five, right? Because x equals five, y equals five. Uh, you know, it, it's important. But, but anyway, so there you go. So um, we'll just make it out of 10 points so it's even. Um, if the person needed help on their factoring, hopefully they, they wrote like a negative one on their paper or something like that. And then we'll just take uh, out of 10 points, you know, they got minus whatever, you know, whatever they got out of 10, just put, put their grade out of 10 points up at the top and, and circle that. And you can hand it back to them and they can take a look at it. And then, Thanks. Give you about 18 seconds to look at it, and then we're gonna hand it in. Garbage rolling right now. So, who's ready for some calculus? Ooh, me, me, me. <laughs> All right. So, um, we're gonna start with with limits. So, if you have a notebook, take that thing out. Limits, limits. Uh, the idea of a limit is, is the foundation of calculus. And um, 
Some people make it hard, uh, but it doesn't have to be. It really doesn't. Please don't make this hard for yourself. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, so a limit, let's, I'll, I'll use chalk. A limit, limit, it's a y value. The y value that a function approaches. as its x value approaches a certain number. It's just the y value. We're just saying what's the y value. Um, so towards the wall, closer, 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 closer. I'm getting close to two. And as I approach an x value of two, what is the y value that it's approaching? Infinity. No. As we approach two, the y value, it's getting really, really close to this wall. Might not be touching it. But it's getting really, really close to the y value of four. So it sounds like a, a bunch of real fancy definitions and notation for like a very easy concept, right? It's, I mean, is that is that rocket surgery? Just what is the y value that we're approaching? Yeah. 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 It's pretty simple. Um, and, and of course, that they want they want to um, make more complicated definitions. I always write simple definitions. If you look in a book, I'm sure there's some real fancy, super scientific definition for limit. You read it, and you don't even know what it means. You're like, I don't know if limits match is different. Um, but so I, I make I make up my own definitions, and I, I try to make it simple. Um, but uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to say, well, in order for this limit to actually be four, they're going to say. The, the limit, let's say in, in general, the limit of a function as x approaches um, some particular number a, because a is a number, is that okay? <laughs> the limit of a function, because we're generalizing, the limit of a function as x gets close to a certain value, we'll call that limit l, if and only if, have you guys seen this? Yeah. Yeah. If means if and only if this is true, the limit of the function as x approaches that value from the left. If you make an exponent of a negative sign, you're like, what? Yeah, th this means from the left. If the limit from the left of a is equal to the limit of the function as x approaches a from the right, right, so the limit from this side has to be the same as, you know, we hop on, hop on the strand and come from the right side of town. Are we also approaching 4? Yes, sir. 
So um, if and only if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right, and they are both equal to L, then this is true. So, again, it's some new notation, it's some new vocabulary. Um, so uh, maybe you should write it um, with words. So this, this stuff means that, uh, we'll, we'll use English, because I'm better at English. Uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left. That's what that little negative sign means. It's not an ion. Um, as x approaches a from the left equals the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right. Okay. Pretty simple concept. Pretty straightforward. Um, now you know it's, it's probably going to start getting weird, right? Um, so with continuous functions, if a function is continuous, um, the limit's always going to be whatever the function value is, right? Because you're going to approach the same thing from both sides, continuous function, right? But say you have a rational function. Let's say we have something, um, one, two, three, four. And let's say we do um, it will pass through two. Okay. Vertical asymptote here at two. Maybe we'll do a horizontal boy at one. So yeah, let's say this. of g of x as x approaches 0 from the left, um, Cecilia, what is the limit of this function as x approaches 0 from the left? So here's x equals 0. We're going to, from the left side of 0, we're cruising. It's approaching a y value or a function value of 2. Am I right or am I right? Um, now, how about the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 from the right, Helen? From the right of 0. Yeah, we're, we're, they're approaching the same thing on both sides. And in order for a limit to exist, this has to be true. Limit, left hand limit and right hand limit have to be equal or else the limit does not exist. Anybody ever seen Mean Girls? Yeah. The limit does not exist. There you go. Now you get it. Um, all right. So if the limit from the left is 2, the limit from the right is 2, then we can conclude that the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 is what? 2. Boom. You got it. So calculus, and really math in general, like from calculus on all the, the higher math, there's a lot of fancy notation and symbols and things, but the concept isn't that crazy, right? Are we good? Cool, now let's take a look at the limit. I'm gonna recycle. Let's look at the limit of g of x as x approaches 
two. Right, so um, how about Andrew? If we, if we hop on this roller coaster um, to the left of two, and, uh, and, and we start rolling towards the next value of two, to the left, we're going towards two. Whoa, it's like a roller coaster. Um, what are we approaching as we approach closer to two? We're at 1.99999. What do you think the y value is? The y, the y value. Oh. There we go. It's gonna, it's gonna go to infinity, right? I mean, the closer we get to two, the the higher up it goes towards infinity. All right. Now the limit uh, of this function, Mauricio, as we approach two from the right. Yeah, this thing if, to the right of two. We hop on it. This thing is going down. So the y value, remember the limit is the y value. So the height of the function as we, from the right side of two we approach two, it's going to negative infinity. Um, and first of all, infinity is not a limit. By definition, infinity is unlimited, right? So infinity isn't a limit, that's not a thing. Um, so this is almost kind of ridiculous to even write this. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it, infinity means uh, it's not a limit. So like a, a, an actual limit is going to be a, a, a number, but um, but even still, I mean this thing is going uh, to positive infinity. It's going to negative infinity. Um, it's going it's going to two different places. What can we say about the limit as we approach two? Does not exist. There is no limit as x approaches two. Right? There's a limit at all these other places on that function, but as x approaches two, no, nah, doesn't happen. And so even if we had a function um, where uh, this, this could happen, this could be a thing, we could have a function that looks like this, right? All we would need is like an absolute value or a, something squared, so they're always positive numbers, and we would end up um, with something like this. And so they're both approaching infinity from both sides. But again, infinity is not a limit. So we're going to say the limit doesn't exist as x approaches 2 for this. Cool? So, um, let's talk about, we'll jot down notes about where, where does the limit not exist? So, I'd be willing to generalize that limits do not exist at vertical asymptotes. Can you guys believe that? So, uh, when does the limit not exist? That's shorthand. Um, Vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are places where the function goes to infinity or negative infinity. Therefore, there is no limit. How about, um, uh, you might see a piecewise function. Um, you guys know about piecewise functions? Yeah, where it kind of breaks off. The what? It's where the line kind of like breaks off. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a Frankenstein function where you're like, it's linear here, and then it's quadratic over here, and then it's, you kind of piece it together. You make a function up out of spare parts kind of thing. So uh, you can have a function. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I don't know, let's say this thing starts here. And goes up here, uh, and there's a hole right here. Actually, just for fun, let's put a hole right here at x equals one, and at x equals two, and then we'll have a a, a solid um, endpoint, which means equal to there uh, at a thing like this here. And then the sine function? Yeah. Let's get after it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no. That's the thing. So, uh, f of x. <laughs> <laughs> or we could call it wtf of x. 
You see what I did there? Uh, ah, I'm funny. Okay. Um, so, uh, three, four, five. This is one, two, three, five. Okay. So let's let's talk limits. So the limit of f of x as x approaches yeah, let's approach one from the left. And let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get more random here. Oh, I didn't call on these people yet. Christian, uh, as x approaches one from the left, what's the y value we're approaching? There is no y value. Okay, I didn't ask you that. So what are we approaching? Oh. We're approaching a y value. Oh, so oh, oh, oh. Uh, we're on, uh, we're for, to the left of x equals 1, two. we're going towards an x value of 1, what is our y value approaching? Two. It's approaching 2. There is no function value there, right, but you could, you could walk towards a hole in the ground, I mean, don't step it, but you can approach it, right? I'm approaching that hole, there it is. So same thing, we, you can approach that value, it's approaching by 2. Right, as you get close to it, you're at 1.99999, you're getting pretty close to 2 even though there's no function value. And then the limit of this function as x approaches 1 from the right, that means from the right side of that hole in the ground. Yeah, same thing. You're approaching a function value of, of 2. Even though, even though there is no function value. <laughs> Right? It's a little weird. So the limit of this function as x approaches 1, what is it? Two. It's, two. it's the same on both sides. It's equal to 2. True story. Yeah. Um, what is f of 2? Hmm? Four. Oh, dang. I messed up. I'm sorry. What is f of 1? F of 1 is undefined. Yeah, yeah. Starting to get a little weird. It's okay. Are we doing okay? Yeah. All right, so let's do, let's recycle this. Let's say, let's look at limits. Um, somewhere else. So we'll take a look at the limit um, as we approach 2 from the left, 2 from the right, and then conclude what it is. So Leslie, as x approaches 2 from the left, uh, what is the, the y value approaching? 3. Yeah, it's approaching 3. You guys see that? And now, Jack, from the right of 2, on that function, what is the y value approaching? Four. Yeah, from the right of it, like, oh, I'm walking towards 4. I'm, at, I'm on 4, actually, and I'm just staying there. Yeah, going towards 4. Cool. What is the limit of this function as x approaches 2? It does not exist. There's not a, you know, is it this or is it this? We don't know. It doesn't exist. It's not approaching one thing consistently from both sides. Yeah? Not that crazy. So, so how about um, what's our generalization about when this kind of thing happens? Limits do not exist at vertical asymptotes. Also, at what other kinds of things? Yeah, uh, breaks, jumps. Um, what do we call it? Because this is a point of discontinuity, but the limit was cool there. So we can't say the limit does not exist for for PODs necessarily because holes holes work out just fine. But let's say um, yeah, uh, breaks. Well, break now, it sounds, I'm going to say a jump in the graph. There's probably some smart person word for that. Do you know that, UCLA? Okay, jump, jump discontinuity. That sounds smarter than what I said. A jump discontinuity. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so that limits don't exist when there's a break and there's a different y value on either side of the canyon. Okay, um, how about uh, the limit? How 
not uh, yeah. the limit as x approaches zero from the left, zero from the right, and zero. So um, zero. Redo. Mary. We're, we're going to assume that this is the whole function and this sinusoidal wave keeps going this way, but there's nothing else that way. So if we say the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, uh, is there a left of 0? No. no. So um, this is an endpoint. So um, what would we say about that? I don't know if we would say it, it does not exist, because that, that implies, um, right, does not exist is when you get here. If you're just dealing with uh, from the left and from the right, you're not going to say it does not exist. So um, yeah, this is, this is a left endpoint, and so uh, you can find the limit of a left endpoint, but just this, um, this doesn't happen for a left endpoint, yeah? And, th and that's okay. It's just, we're not going to judge it. Okay, some people don't have left. Uh, Wait, if it left. happens, then how does the rule apply? Okay, you know, Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Um, oh, exceptions to the rule. Um, yeah, it's harsh, isn't it? <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds pretty, like, absolute. Um, okay, so there's, there's, uh, ugh. Maybe there's some fine print in here. <laughs> Y'all didn't read the fine print. Um, yeah, so uh, at endpoint limits are, are different. Yeah, ew. I don't like saying that. Um, well, because piecewise functions are they're kind of weirdo functions. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess you could say, um, like, say the square root function, right? Like as the limit as x approaches 0, you can't approach it from this side. You can only approach it from this side. And, and as the x value approaches 0, what is the y value approaching on that? Zero. It's approaching 0. So, um, so endpoint limits are, are just, you just do a, um, a one-sided limit, and that works out. So um, maybe, so I'm, I'm sure there's, it probably says something more specific in a book somewhere. I'll make it up as I go. So I left, I left out some fine print about, you know, um, only applicable at, at participating uh, stores or something like that. Um, so uh, endpoint limits, believe me, um, just are w what the value is approaching. Right, because in order for a limit to not exist, there needs to be um, something uh, inconsistent. Like it's approaching two different things. I'm like, oh, that doesn't work. Right, but if there's if there's no other thing to, to disprove what it's approaching, then by default it is that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so he's not happy about that. Uh, okay. So what what is uh, I'm just gonna gloss over that. Uh, what is, what is x what is the the limit of this function as x approaches zero from the right? It's approaching one. And, and therefore, the, the limit. The limit is <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, just kidding, because it is. You're saying that since we don't, it, in this case, since we don't have the, the zero from the left, we just have to go with one. That's yeah, that's all we have. So, um, yeah, go buy a calculus book and find out what I did wrong here. <laughs> I don't know. This, this sounds good to me. Um, are we okay with that? Yes, Alina? So, should we change your position on the answer? Damn it. Take out that. Okay. <laughs> All right. All better. <laughs> All right. I fixed it. Okay. Oh, there we go. <coughs> that was a typo. It was just merely a typo. A hando. Okay. Uh, who, who, who? How about, um, how about, let's, let's look at this. <laughs> I should have never done that. <laughs> Let's look at the limit uh, as x approaches 4 from the 
left, four from the right. Um, so, uh, I just talked to you. Uh, Jenny's, as X approaches four from the left, what is the, the limit? Mm -hmm. We're approaching a value of four. And Selena, <laughs> from the right, it's also approaching four. <laughs> the limit's four. Yay. Okay. Um, now, how about this? Uh, yay. <laughs> You're going to regret <laughs> the day you said sign. <laughs> so, um, how about, how about, let's try this. Uh, what is the limit of this function as x approaches infinity, Mr. McElhaney? As this function goes this way forever, what, what number does it approach? Does it have to be just one number? <laughs> <laughs> yes. In order for it to be a limit. Is it is it approaching a specific number? Not really. No. No, it's like uh oh. just uh, uh, uh. it would just be like sign. Yeah, I mean so it it doesn't approach a certain value. It does not exist. As X goes to infinity it does not exist. Um, we could have a function, like say we have, um, you know, uh, g of x is 10 to the negative x. So we have an uh, exponential decay happening here. So the limit of this function as x approaches infinity, uh, Mauricio, what is the y value approaching? Yeah, as we go to the right forever, this function is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. It never actually equals zero, right? Half of something, half of something, half of that, half of that, half of that. You can always keep taking half of it and never reach zero. But you get really close. You get really, really close to zero. Woo! Question? Yes? <laughs> well, the limit is zero. The function value is not zero. But we're approaching, we're approaching that wall, even though we never get to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, limits, uh, vertical asymptotes, jump discontinuities. Ooh. Ooh, I got a good one. Okay. Oh, you're gonna love this. Whatever. <laughs> um. Oh, this is really cool. This is really cool. Um, f of x is equal to the sine of 1 over x. Yeah, boy. Um, how do you even graph that? So how about, um, maybe let's do like an XY table. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised. But uh, if x is um, 1, it's going to be the, the sine of, of 1 over 1. And, and the, the sine of, of 1, right? Because this is, this is pi over 2. So this is like 1.57. Um, so the, the sine of 1 radian. I don't know what the is. 0.7 or something. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. We make it up as we go. But how about, what's the sign of, uh, when, when x is 0.1, um, you put a 0.1 here, and the sign of 10, so the sign of 10 is, uh, you know, this is this is 2 pi, so it's 6.28. So the sign of 10 is, is over here somewhere. Um, <laughs> Um, you know what, Every, everyone come grab a calculator, let's have fun.